Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm Brendan. Thanks for joining me here at Just Plain Crazy. We are down in the lair and check out what I got in front of me from Gator RC and Sevart USA. This is the Mini Avanti. We are throwing in a Zykoi 45. We're going to assemble this bad boy. We're going to show you how I do my first turbine. Let's get this done. All right, so you got your instruction manual out. It is not in color, but you can actually go to uh, any website and just Google search the Avanti Mini and you can get a nice color blown out diagram if you want to reprint it. The instructions are pretty good. Right in the very beginning, they give you throw rates. They give you CG information. They'll break it down later in there about an EDF or a turbine installation. So instruction book is pretty good. Thumb through it first to make sure you kind of have an idea what you're doing. Two places we're going to start. Number one, we got to get the gear down. All right, let's get started by putting the retracts down. In this case, I'm just using a simple servo tester and an ICAD battery. Just make sure that we power these things up appropriately to put them down. So we are going to go to right there. That's good. All right, so now you saw that process. Not real difficult, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the heating iron blared up. Don't mix up any of your flaps or surfaces, but we also have, because the workbench, when you deal with covered planes, monocoat planes, you push down on this on your workbench at all and there's any imperfections, you dimple this stuff and it looks ugly. This thing is beautiful and we wanna keep it that way. So we got a nice foam block to put down on the workbench. I want to take my heating iron and I'm going to pull these flaps off one wing at a time and I'm going to seal all of these edges so that way I don't have anything coming loose later. The nice part about this is I don't have glow fuel flopping all over the plane and making a mess of it. But with that being said, loose covering stinks and uh, we don't want that. So let's just go ahead and make sure that all of our edges are sealed up to our liking. So we're going to do all of our control surfaces right now. All right guys, in the next section, it's time to start to glue all of these in. And one of the things that I did that you can hopefully see here is that I, I used a Sharpie and I made center lines for those. One of the other things that you can do that I like doing is take a pin and just put a pin in there through that spot. And that's gonna help those things from sliding too far in and really being a pain. And then you can also use them for spacers. So that way you're not making your control surface too tight and then you can't get the throw. So you do need a hair of space in there, but you don't wanna to do too much. Now at this point, um, you could do a couple things. You could go ahead and use thin CA and just try and wick those right into there. But I'm gonna caution you on that because that's what the book's showing you, but they're not telling you the whole story. You need to dry fit for spacing. So you need to know that all your hinge slots on both sides are going to line up. If you do that, don't just assume because you put those CA hinges in there that they're going to be fine. And then we want to make sure that our placement is good so that way we don't have... Um, we don't have issues where anything's gonna rub and that your decals line up and all of those things. So I'm pretty happy with that dry fit there. And then what I'll do is I'll squeeze that in. I'll kind of bend it to expose those hinges a little bit. And you can use the pins for guides if you wanna put CA on there. But if you don't have one of these, go get them, pipettes. These things go on the end of here. Don't ruin your plane by putting gobs of this stuff all over the place. Get yourself a pipette. You could see this one's kind of worn, tattered. It's time to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut the tip off of this to let air in. And then we're gonna replace that. I always keep a rag handy with me too. 
This will help with um, in case you get a, a CA run. You don't want that running all over, especially a composite plane, because when you go to wipe it off, it's going to create issues. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll hold that underneath in case any wicks through or just take my time and do a couple drops at a time until I know it's right. So you just take your pipette, push your pipette on there. You can test it somewhere on your bench to make sure you're not going to have any leaks or runs, which we'll do now. And like I said, you can go ahead and pull out those hinges if you want to. Um, you can gap them, or I'm sorry, pull out those pins now if you wanted to. But just do a final check. Make sure you're happy with everything. Make sure that you have full throw that you want. And then we can bend and glue. And we're going to do this with all of our control surfaces at this time. And this is the other nice part about doing the covering cleanup first, is that you don't have loose covering in the way causing you issues. So there you guys go, we got one surface done. Give that some time to dry, give it a tug. If you want, you can chase it a little bit later, but we should be good there. So let's get the rest done. So these things are going to go with the fat part down at the bottom and you will notice that there are two notches right there. Take your heating iron and go ahead and let that thing, um, you know, push down that covering right there and you'll start to see like there's a little square there. And then this one is right about there. So what I'm going to do now that I have those heated down is I'm going to take my razor knife and we're going to go ahead and poke through those. And then <clears throat> a couple ways to do this. Number one, when you put these on, you can lock that tab into the back with a little bit of epoxy and then just simply use um, like some canopy glue for covering the covering right here. Or what I might do is I might just strip away a little bit of that stuff right there so that on the inside portion of the wing, you guys can see that right there. Uh, I'll cut a little of that covering away, expose wood to wood, and use epoxy. So um, let's try and get a, a trial fit and see what this thing looks like.
All right, now that we got the vortice fences done, let's go ahead and start on our hinges. Now, usually I use expanding foam Gorilla Glue on row bars, but these are these are really tiny. Um, the plane is well built. They're glued. They're like the channels for them are nice and tight. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the three from our other wing again. Keep your halves mated together. Don't get them mixed up. I'm going to take the hinges out of here and we're just going to go ahead and lube up the sockets. I've used Vaseline prior. You can use oil, you know, whatever you want. Just don't get it anywhere other than the hinge. And the reason we do that is so it doesn't stick once we put epoxy in it. Now we're just going to take this epoxy and we're going to start working it into the, the hinge pocket. The nice part about the Gorilla Glue is it'll foam in around the wood. So you'll definitely have like a super tight fit to the hinges. And I, I've had row barts that I've used Gorilla Glue on and man they've, they've been in there 20 years and I haven't had any issues. So the thing is about epoxy, you want to prevent getting it all over the monocoat or covering, I should call it, because then what will happen is it, when it dries, sometimes it yellows. So we'll get a rag. Get a little alcohol. And just wipe that off any any excess and now we can take these and if you want to you can actually just take those and a little dip around in there is fine get a little bit of a coating on them and then we try and want to get the the hinge on the the hinge of the robot right on the pivot line of the surface. Now you can check them and make sure that they, when you seat them down on that hinge line, that they're all parallel to each other. And this is just one of the ways I do it. Just a simple eyeball like that, and that's fine. Now we're going to take the epoxy and just work it in. To these hinge pockets here. You'll notice one of the things that I do is I put this stuff in, I twist the toothpick as I go and that'll help to actually wind up the a lot of the excess up the toothpick and it doesn't allow it to make a mess all over the plane. And I can just take a little bit of this stuff and we'll wipe it on this on the hinges. For that end. Now here's the big part. Make sure you glue it in the right way and you don't glue the surface on upside down. And we'll do a test fit. If you have any extra, get yourself a Q-tip and work that stuff off of there or a toothpick. We'll just make sure we have a nice fit in our seams up top. There you go. Now we're just going to let that sit and uh, and dry. All right, guys, you can see our flaps. Everything there is all hinged up and dried. Our vortice fences are in. And again, they do show you at step 11 doing this after the horns and all the ailerons and flaps are in. Um, I thought it was easier to do the vortice fences with the flaps out. That way I had room for my hands to fit in there a little better. So up to you, that's what I prefer. All right, guys, so whenever I go to set in my control horns, I use my handy-dandy laser. We're going to shoot right down that hinge line. 
Hopefully you could see that. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to epoxy in those control horns so that hole is perfectly on the hinge line. And what that's going to give you is a very neutral flying plane, meaning that we're going to be using the same amount of throw to go this way as this way from that servo. And it's going to take uh, essentially the same movement. That's what, we're, that's what we're shooting for here. So we're going to tape those off. We're going to epoxy those in overnight, make sure that they are set in the right spot. Again, um, make sure that we drill a hole in each one of those to let the epoxy sit in there, and then we're going to scuff up that base with sandpaper. Do not just take them and plop them in like that. So with all the control horns, we're going to drill a hole in here to help with epoxying, and then we're also going to sand and scuff up those edges. So there you could see the discoloration. And now what we're going to do is we're going to place those in at each location, epoxy them in, let it sit overnight. All right, guys, here we go. Um, let's go ahead and start mounting up our servos in the wings and getting our wires run. So there's a couple things here that we want to do. Number one, we always pre-drill our holes and then thread in the screw. Then you're going to wick those things with CA to harden those up. So here you can see one that isn't drilled and one that is. I've pulled the retracts out of here so that way I can put some epoxy in the joints on the inside just to strengthen up the pockets a little bit. That was recommended through some people messaging me as I started on this project, which is super cool the way that people reach out and share their experiences with me, even though I'm kind of the one <laughs> doing the videos to show other people how to do this. So the feedback from you guys is awesome. I love it. One of the things, though, that we have to tackle here is servo arms. So... The servo arms that come on these things aren't near long enough, so they are 24 tooth. In order to get out of the pockets, like you can see for this flap, um, and definitely for the elevators, they have the same problem. Not so much with the ailerons, but you got to put these obnoxiously big Hobbyco old fiberglass reinforced arms, and they're they're half the size of the servo. The problem is is that they're much longer than I do need, so. If you go all the way out to the end, you're gonna lose that resolution, plus you're also gonna wind up losing that torque. So when you start getting really far away from this servo. So one of the things I wanna do is kinda of use these as a test bed for right now to get things set up, but I have a new set of arms that's a nice combination of in between those two. They are coming and they are on the way. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, wire loom to protect those wires that are in there. You will have to extend the aileron one because um, we got to bring it up to the front of the wing and wrap it out. We will have our flap servo that has to cross the pocket of the retract in here, which isn't a big deal. We can just tape that thing down and out of the way. And then um, we have our retract wire itself. And then on top of it, we are going to be replacing the hub assemblies with brakes. So we're actually gonna have another set of wires so we have the ability to stop this. Do I think this thing is necessarily, from all the videos I watch, needing brakes? No, but by the AMA guidelines we have to follow, you have to have some way to stop this thing upon command. So I have to meet the requirement for brakes. Um, parachutes, anchors, all those things work too, right? So anyway, what we're going to do in this section, we're going to time lapse through. 
We're gonna get those drilled. If you need to, file the pockets. Don't shove down through there, you'll break the stuff. Um, file your pockets just as big as needed. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Hanson Hobbies locking connector that's going to have all those pins come into one bulk connector. And then that way when we go to plug in and out our wing panels, we only have one connector here to come in and out of. There's no way to make mistakes. And you'll notice on the side of the fuselage of the plane, they have pockets right there for three wires. Number one, that ain't gonna be enough with brakes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open those pockets together, just Dremel that open, and then I'm gonna epoxy the connector there. So as the wing slides over, it just plugs in and sits right in that wing half. So it'll be a nice fit, um, nice clean connection. So that's what we're gonna work on doing. Um, so let's get to it, time lapse time. All right, so our servo is done, quick lock connector. Here's our extension, quick lock, so you can see how that's gonna click together, and then that thing ain't coming apart. So I'm good with this. We're gonna wind up fishing this through. Um, the other thing that I will do is I will probably lift this back out when the time is ready, just so I can wiggle test all my connections and make sure I have no failures. So that's, that's also always a good idea. So anyway, let's... Um, Let's click that in, let's tape and fish. Put a smidge of tape on here. And um, these servos, typically I use the grommets and I um, will mount servos by grommets. And that does a couple things. Number one, it protects them from vibration, from engines, or from linkages that aren't quite right, things like that. In this case, um, we have no vibration. And if you do in a turbine, it ain't gonna last long. Um, so, my linkages won't be a problem. I'll make sure that they're all good. And I think I'm going to hard mount these so I have no give in any of my um, control components. And that's how easy that is to fish that through. I'll just go ahead and fish this. Like so. Servo's a nice fit. I'll take this out because we don't need this. Not yet. We'll wait till we get our arms and then we're going to get our linkages put on there. So we do need to make sure that we save all these pieces. The screw and the um, lock washer. See them. So anyway, we'll set these off in our dish to the side. All right, guys. So um, we got our connector with our flaps, our ailerons, and our retracts wired in. Now it's time to wire in our brake assembly. So that's what we are going to do now. Um, these are from Flux RC. So basically, I'm opting to use brakes for now. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this thing should have plenty of power. It's not an issue. So remove the grub screw out of there. Loosen that up. Slide out our old assemblies. Four millimeter axle shafts. Um, 50 millimeter wheels. So you have basically two positions to put your wire. And it's either in the front or towards the back. I'm going to opt for the front. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get just a little bit of Loctite, blue Loctite. We'll put it in a dish there. And I'm going to take this grub screw out. And I'm just going to dab just a little bit on there. 
we're going to get this axle set into place. So that way I'm going to hit the flat. We're going to reinstall it. And make sure it stays nice and tight, but you don't strip it. And then this um, wire, I'm just going to have to figure out how I want to route this to prevent having rubbing issues. And we're going to put this right with the um, retract wire and we'll put it into our locking connector. So let's get this terminal cut off and get this thing fixed up. All right, guys, here you can see our one connector is all done. It was easiest, and, and I have that marked right there with a little bit of protection with the conduit. Um, it was easiest to literally route everything backwards. So everything comes up in here and comes back because even the flap I had to add a little extension on in order to be able to have room to plug stuff in and fish that back. So the brakes were the most challenging part, I think, to get routed. So that way I have play in the flex and... Um, that things aren't gonna get pinched. So let me, let me articulate that and you can watch it. There you have it. So just enough curl, flex, movement, things aren't gonna rub through or get ruined. But um, yeah, so I like that, I like that a lot. I guess if essentially you wanted to run this around the backside, you could do ultimately the same thing and then that way you wouldn't have to have the loop that way, when it compressed, it actually got longer from that stretch, but just an idea. All right, guys, and there you have it. That's a wrap for now, only because we all have very short attention spans. So I'm Brendan. This is Just Plain Crazy. This is the Mini Avanti from Sebart USA and Gator RC. Do me a favor, link down in the description below, or check them out over at www.gator-rc.com. Huge supply of, especially in the Mini Series, the Mini Avanti in tons of different colors. They have a BAE Hawk in this size, lots of different models. And if you're into the bigger and you got a nice paved runway and you're expanding that inventory, they got a nice supply of top RC models, Seagulls models, all kinds of stuff. So do me a favor, go on over and check them out. With that being said, if you liked what you just saw, smash that thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. Like, share, subscribe, all that cool shameless plug stuff. Don't forget to check us out on the official Facebook and Instagram Just Playing Crazy pages. So with that, again, I'm Brendan. This is Just Playing Crazy. You're Just Playing Crazy for always hanging out and watching me. I appreciate every one of you. Till the next episode, I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.